Up until this point, we learned how to insert pictures, charts. Well, let's come up here, click on the Insert tab, and there they are in the Illustrations group. We covered all these except for the Smart Art, and when I hover over it, you can read more about it right there. It says the Smart Art graphics range from graphical wisdom process diagrams to more complex graphics. Well, I better show you. Let me click on it. It opens up and it gives you the categories over to the left hand side, including the All. That includes all the categories here. But let me go ahead and uh, cover some of these categories, like the list category. In an earlier training video, when you had a bunch of items that you want to put in a bulleted list or a numbered list, well, now you can go ahead and put it in a graphic list. For example, come over here, hover over one of them, and you can see the name for that smart art for that list. It's vertical box list. Click on it, and you can read more about it over here. And basically what it is is that for each item in your list, you can have it separated into each of these shapes. So instead of numbers or bullets, go ahead and do it graphically. Item 1 in the first box, item 2 in the second box, and so on. You come over here to the process and go over another one. Select the first one. That's the basic process. You can read about it here. And it says this is used to show a progression or sequential steps in a task process or workflow. For example, you got to eat your dinner first. After you do that, you can go ahead and have dessert. After you do that, you can go outside and play. Simple enough, right? Well, let me come over here and select hierarchy. I'm going to choose in our exercise here the organization chart. Come over here, you can read about it. This is used to show a hierarchical information or reporting relationships in an organization, like I'm the president, and then I have my assistants and subordinates. So let me go ahead and click Okie Dokie, and it inserts it. Now, this is a bit big for me because it's cutting off the uh, text pane here, and I want to show you that. So I want to reduce the size of my chart here. And if you want to reduce it or make it even larger, just go ahead and hover over one of the corners until you see arrows pointing in opposite directions. Then go ahead and click. Let me try it again. Click. And then you can move it down or you can move it out. I'm going to go ahead and move it down just to right there. Okay. It's still cut off, but when it comes to smart art, you can't just go ahead and click on the border and move it around because it's based upon your paragraphs. As you recall, when you click on the Home tab, go to the Paragraph group, click on your Show Hide Codes, you get these paragraph markers and the way to get them, hitting the Enter, 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 Enter key. Okay. So if I want to go ahead and move this around, I've got to have other paragraphs to move this uh, organization chart to. Go ahead and select it, hover over the border, click and drag. And when I move my pointer down, you can see that when I go from one paragraph to the next, you get that vertical dotted line. Wherever I let go, that's where it's going to take the smart art graphic to, or the org chart. Let go, and boom, it puts it right there. Okay, Four paragraphs down, one, two, three, and it's on the fourth one. I'm going to go ahead and hit undo and turn off the codes. You get the idea, right? Well, I can also align the uh, organization chart. I can't do it now because I have it selected. And you can see that it doesn't show me how it's aligned. So when I click on the outside of it into the actual paragraph itself and not working on the uh, organization chart, then it shows me that it's defaulted to the left. I'm going to go ahead and center that. Looks good. Click in it. And OK, now I can see my text pane there. Now the purpose of the text pane is that you can go ahead and either type in the text for your shape in the text pane or you can actually do it within the shape itself. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and type me as the president, Kurt. Oh, I can't fit any more. Wrong. Just go ahead and keep typing. And when I keep typing, it reduces the font size to fit the longest text within any of these shapes to fit within that shape. So if I had some text in here, supercalifragilisticexpialatrocious, that's long text, so the font size in all these shapes would be reduced collectively to about, I don't know, size 1 or 2. If I want to go ahead and add my title below my name here, just hit enter within the shape and it's... Now, like I said, I can either type the text within the shape or I can come over here in the text pane. And when it comes to the organization chart, well, you have your president and then you have your subordinates and they're drawn down here. But when you have something like this, a shape off to the side and not directly beneath uh, one of the shapes, it means it's an assistant. So I have an assistant here. So I can come over here and type in Susan Dole. Now, if I want to go ahead and, you know, have the title underneath here, Susan Dole, Admin Assistant, I can't hit the Enter key because if I hit the Enter key while I'm working in the text pane, it thinks that I want to add another assistant. and I don't want to do that, which, by the way, congratulations, now you know how to add. But there's a better way to add shapes instead of doing it within the uh, text pane here. So I can either go ahead and delete that um, line there within the text pane or just come over here, click on the border of the shape, now when I click on the border, if the cursor's flashing in it, it's not going to delete the shape because it thinks that you're trying to delete the text within the shape. So click on it again to make sure that the shape is selected. Then hit the delete key and there you go. It removes it. 
What you have to do instead is come over here and click at the end of the name if you're working within the text pane. Hold down the shift key and hit enter. When you do that it does a soft return, not a hard return, and it doesn't add an additional shape. It just gives you a new line below the name here, Susan Dole. So I can say admin. And then I can go ahead and use the arrow down key on the keyboard to go to the next bullet below. And then shift enter, he's a VP. And then arrow down. Shift enter, he's also a VP, they're all VPs, then the arrow down key, shift enter, VP. Now notice that because Michael Flanagan has such a long name here, or there's a lot more text within this shape than any other, it looks like it's shrinking, or it is actually reducing the font size of all the other text to the shape that contains the most uh, characters within the shape, or text there. So the only way around that is to either abbreviate his name, or go ahead and just hover over, let me click off, outside and then click on it again so I can actually get the border of the organization chart hover over the uh, lower right hand corner or one of the corners and then just click and drag to increase the size of it that's the other option okay let's go up here click on the related design tab because I want to go over the create graphics group got a lot of important features here like adding shapes like I said there's an easier way than doing it over here in the text pane all you have to do is come over here and select a shape that you want to add a shape to and what I mean by that is that when you click on the drop down arrow, you can add a shape after or before. That means linearly, meaning that you can add a shape on the left hand side before the shape or after it on the right hand side at the same level. Or you can add a shape above it, so I've got somebody above me. Or I can add a shape below me, a subordinate, which would be down at this level because this shape right here, you can see, is an assistant. Or it's just off to the side of the line and not directly below it and stretching out here or branching out. It's sitting on the side. So if I go ahead and I say let's add another assistant, boom, it pops it over to the side and go ahead and type in a name. Let me go ahead and delete that. And let's do Michael Flanagan. Let's say that he has, click on the add shape, um, somebody in front of him. So we'll say before. So it adds a shape before. And because it's trying to squeeze these shapes within this amount of uh, room that it has here, then it shrinks all the shapes and the text here. So Again, you may want to increase the size by hovering over one of the corners and clicking and dragging out. And then go ahead and type in the text, either within the shape or over here in the uh, text pane. Shift Enter will make her a VP as well. Now, let's say that we made a mistake and we're like, oops, I didn't mean to make Carol Brady a VP. How do I change that? Well, with the shape selected, you can come up here into the Create Graphic Group and demote her and it takes her down to the next level. So we have the first level, me, then we have the VP level, and then we have, well, she's no longer VP, she's at the next level, I guess, a manager. And you can also promote her and say, well, actually, we made a mistake, let's promote you, and put you back with all the other VPs. Okay, other things we have here, well, the text pane, when you click on it, it disappears, click on it again, it brings it back up, or you can close out, and then bring it back up. We have right to left, so if you go ahead and you click that, it will switch along this access point, whatever's on this side, over to the other side, and whatever's on that side, over to this side. So we have Matt Bain, click on it, he flips completely on the other side, Matt Bain. Susan Dole was on that side, she flipped over. So we can click on it again to reverse it. And then next, we have move up or down. When it talks about moving up or down, it means that the shape you have selected is not moving up or down, because that would be a promotion or a demotion within the chart. It means to move it either to the left or right. And for me, when I have more than one person at the same level, I organize it in my mind at least that on the left-hand side is the person who's been with us the longest. So if Carol Brady was here longer than any of these other VPs, she has seniority, I go ahead and select her shape and then move her up. One, moves her, okay, move her again. Now she's at the head of the line here from left to right. And then Matt Bain is next in seniority, and then Josh, and then Mikkel. Okay, let me go ahead and select Josh here and select his uh, shape because I want to go ahead and demote him so I can show you when I select Matt Bain now notice how that he's demoted but hanging on the right hand side if I want to change that so he's hanging on the left hand side then come up here click on the layout drop down arrow and then you can see left hanging select that and he flips so he's hanging on the left you can go ahead and change that back if you want to the right in any case select whoever is above him and then choose the layout that you want him to hang from but right now he's just hanging, so we'll leave him alone. Okay, next you have the layouts. You can go ahead and click on the More button and change the layout. I'm not going to do that because I like mine. And then over here we have the Smart Art Styles. Let me click on the More button. Ooh, shiny. Click on the Inset. That's the name of that shiny 3D uh, format. Click on that. I can change the colors. Click on the drop-down arrow and, I don't know, let's choose, what's that, colorful? 
or what's this one? That one's colorful range accent color two uh, to three. Sure, go ahead and select that. Now you have the reset graphic. I'll show you that in just a second. If I click reset now, it takes it back to the way it was, but let me go to the format tab and show you a few other things. You can go ahead and change the shapes, do shape styles, change the color of any shape that you have selected down below. So you can get more particular with the shape here, like Matt Bain, VP. Oh, he's really fancy. We better give him a fancy color. You can also do like we learned in our um, inserting shapes. You can change the shape field, the outline, the effects. Um, you can also add word art styles, text effects. Well, a lot of the stuff we've already covered. Finally, if I want to go ahead and take one of these shapes and say, well, I want to move it over here, you can. In fact, you can get really gross with this and go, oh, I don't know what that's doing. It's still connected to it, but now he's moved above here. Maybe he's a, an assistant for a day, and then we can go ahead and move him back. But when we try to move him back, it doesn't quite fit, does it? Well, you can either freehand it or... The other option is to go back to the design tab and click on the reset graphic. The good news is, is that it puts it back to the way it was. The bad news is, is that it put it back to the way it was and I don't have my shinies here and I'm like, oh great, what colors did I choose? What type of style did I have? So you'll have to decide if that's worth it to you or not. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.